Hi there, Habib with you once again. Uh, this is in continuation with the series Tie Your Camel. Uh, this is we are at episode 2 right away. Just a quick recap about episode 1 where we shared about uh, before even setting goals, before even understanding how we need to go towards our giant goals in life. Uh, the important thing is to understand that there are certain things which are under our control and certain things are not under our control. That is what we discussed in episode number one. Episode two uh, is all of, uh, the, the title of episode two is carrot versus sticks or carrot and sticks basically. So why did I uh, even name this episode as carrot and stick? There is a uh, you know a reason that all of us, all human beings, whatever we do, we either do it gain some pleasure or we do it to avoid some pain, right? There are only two things which drive us to do things uh, to, to achieve goals. Either we try to gain some pleasure or we try to avoid some pain. So uh, basically even before going to that, I would like to uh, discuss a bit about the structure of goals where we all face a challenge, which is the biggest area we face a challenge. So I'm going to take this uh, quick word open as a, a short form to understand uh, how you and I approach goals and where we get stuck. O P E N. So if I take O P E N, the first anything to do with a goal or anything to do with a purpose or anything to do with a vision, the first thing we try to do is define the objectives, the outcome. Right? Most of us are clear with that. Objective is not a problem. We know that this is what I need to achieve. So we move forward from O to P. P is about planning. Even planning, we don't have a problem. Plan, we, we make a schedule, we make the timing, we make the timetable and all that. We don't get stuck. But the problem is we come to the next step, which is execution, where most of us fail. We do not put this entire objective and plan into action. Unless you don't put it into action. You're not going to achieve it, right? Right? So, O, P, we get stuck with P, which is execution, and we can't move towards N, which is finding out new strategies because we are stuck with the execution part. So, I'm going to talk more about this in the coming up session, but for today, uh, let us move towards carrot and stick. Now, what do you understand by uh, carrot, the carrot and stick? Well, everywhere from our childhood till now, Whatever have we have been doing is always associated either to a carrot or to a stick. Either we are told that we get something or if you don't do it, you're going to lose something. You're going to pay a cost to it. Right? So let's move and take three examples. I, I took three examples because these are common examples you and I face. Um, while I'm trying to build up how to actually achieve giant goals, I'm taking small bit size activities or things which you and I struggle before we even go on to larger size goals. Now, these three, uh, the three things which I have picked up right now are, a person wakes up late. This is the first example. The second example is a person is struggling to achieve fitness by going to the gym. And uh, third example is paying bills, right? I'm taking three examples, very simple examples, right? So let's look at it now. A person who gets up late, uh, if a person, okay, uh, again, people are of predominantly two characteristics. Predominantly, I mean, I'm not saying every case, but predominantly. A person could be a person who's all the try time trying to avoid pain. That is, moving away from pain person. But anything the person does, he will first look, he or she will first look at avoiding pain. The other category of people obviously are people who look for what is the gain, what is the pleasure, what is the benefit in it, right? These are the two broader categories. I am trying to explain uh, these three activities through, by, by explaining these three activities, I am introducing you to the concept of pain, pain versus pleasure. So now let's take the person who gets a play. The person who is avoiding pain, right, would be stating that, uh, I have a boring job ahead. That's why I'm sleeping late. So he's not motivated to get up to 
because he's got an excuse. So what is the excuse for a person who avoids pain? The excuse is he's got a task, a boring a task, or a boring job, or a boring activity after he gets up. Right? That's his excuse. Whereas a person who is pleasure oriented is saying that the bed is cozy. Both are not getting up on time, but the way they think about it is very different. Right? Let's take up a gym, a gym activity. A person is trying to go for fitness, but is not able to achieve it. So, what would be there? The person who yeah, you know is avoiding pain. What was, would be their excuse? The activity itself is painful, right? And the person who is going towards pleasure, what is his excuse? What could be his excuse? I mean, I could do something else pleasurable, like watch TV instead of going to this boring gym, painful gym, right? His excuse could be predominantly, I think today, you know, there's an episode, so I need to watch that episode. Let's take up paying bills. The person who's, you know, avoiding pain, would be thinking of the cumbersome act of paying the bill itself, like you know, it's a time waster. That he might be giving an excuse that it's a time waster, right? And whereas a person who is moving towards pleasure could be uh, choosing a better task, he's saying, I'm just bill paying, I have something better to do, right? This is how uh, a person, the same act or the same activity can be approached differently by the person who predominantly is conditioned to avoid pain and the person who is conditioned to move towards pain. Now, what happens if the person, you know, a person who, uh, who is purpose driven, what happens, how the change happens, right? Uh, uh, let's take the same, same example of uh, waking up, the gym and the paying bills. Why would somebody do it? Why would somebody wake up? Right? What is there? I, ca I can't call it an excuse, but I think it is something more powerful than an excuse. It is more purpose driven when a person transforms, when takes decisions. How would a person who is avoiding pain take a decision? How would a person who is, uh, you know, moving towards pleasure take a decision? My, mind you, none of these two strategies are wrong. They are a part of us. A person who is running away, moving away from pain is naturally moving away from pain. It's, no, it's perfectly okay. Person who's moving towards pleasure is naturally moving towards pleasure. Fine, perfectly okay. They are, I'm not comparing them both, but I'm trying to give you strategies which can suit you. Right? Discover whether you are a person who is moving away from pain or moving towards pleasure, and use these uh, these uh, you know tools basically. So the person who is predominantly moving towards pleasure would have these aspects with him when he's taking up these. Things. The same three tasks which I told. The first task is getting out of bed. So what happens is his moving towards pleasure, reason, I'm not saying excuse, it's a reason or it's the why in his life. Why should I get up early in the morning? Right? It could be that his, his anticipation of a promotion in the job or the delight in the job he's going to get is more important than the boring, the, the job being boring itself. Right? So, the thought of his getting a promotion, that's a pleasure, is more higher than the pain of the job or pain of the work he has to do. So, he says, I have to go. There's a transformation, there's a change, there's a shift. A person who's going to the gym, for example, his drive of pleasure would be that he's able to imagine his body in shape, having a six pack, and all those aspects, which is greater than the actual physical pain of the activity itself. The physical pain does not even occur because the pleasure of imagining himself uh, in that state of being so fit is so powerful that it overwhelms and it takes him to do that action. This is about execution. A person who is probably, you know, uh, paying bills on time and he is pleasure oriented is, is probably telling himself, I saved the fine. That's pleasurable to save money, right? Over standing in a queue or standing uh, you know, looking at it as a time waster. Now, look at. Let us look at the same three activities, which are perceived by a person who is moving away from pain, able to achieve execution. How would he execute? So, for him, for example, um, waking up early, his uh, pain towards losing the job would be higher 
his excuse or his his reason for getting up early could be his his entire focus of losing the job would be greater than any other pain. Got it? So he would get up and say, I don't want to lose the job. Whereas the other guy who's going towards pleasure would say, I want the promotion. This person says, I want to be safe in my job. Both are achieving getting up early, but the way they are doing the strategy is very different, right? I imagine the, the gym activity. He would probably say, uh, the person who's avoiding pain would say, I don't want to see a bad medical report. Whereas the person who's moving towards pleasure is looking at the six packs and you know the fitness. Whereas this guy who's getting up and going to the gym, he still says that I don't want a bad medical report. I want to be healthy. So he's imagining the pain of the medical report that causes him to go for this, uh, go for the act. And a person who's paying bills, who is moving away from pain, uh, would be probably imagining the penalty, the fine, this fine. Whereas the other person says, it's the same thing. The other person who's moving towards pleasure says that I saved the fine. Whereas the person who's moving away from pain would say, I'll get penalized, I better pay the bill. The same thing, approach from two different strategies, right? Once we are able to execute, then we can move forward towards something new. I'm giving you a concept, very important concept, and you can apply this to across your life. This is something called as chunking up and chunking down. The human mind processes information 60,000 times faster in visual format as compared to text words. It, it, it processes visuals very quickly, right? Now, what do we do? Any, either whether it is a pain-oriented person or I mean, avoiding pain person or moving towards pleasure person, what we usually do is when we take up a task, a person who is avoiding pain chunks the task so high that it actually naturally demotivates him to do that task. For example, I take the, uh, the example of going to the gym. Like if he's going to the gym, he would he would start imagining that he first has to buy the track pants, he has to buy a t-shirt, he has to buy the shoes, he has to wear them, he has to get on the bike, he has to fill the fuel, he has to ride all the way, he has to go to the gym, he has to park the bike. So every single thing which I am telling you is a frame in the mind. So multiple frames, about 10, 15, 20, 30 frames about one particular activity can actually demotivate us from doing that act. It's so well said in one of the ads, just do it. What does it mean? Chunk down. Do not chunk up. Don't chunk up an activity. People who achieve transformation and a quick execution are people who are able to chunk down the activity. For example, it's gym. They have one frame, one single giant frame, and the giant frame is having completed the act itself. The giant frame is the person walking out of the gym happy. That would be the frame. They don't have all these frames. So they are, have this conditioned their mind to a unique way of changing the entire frame into one single giant frame which talks about execution and after execution whether it is pain or pleasure both work together in this particular journey hope you enjoyed the session we'll come back for episode